Now, oh wait, does anyone know, Sue was on the judging call this morning. Does anyone know she's planning to attend the public meeting? Because I know she's on vacation traveling. Does anyone know? Lauren might know, but I think she's not on the call yet. I'm here, but I'm not sure, Alex. Oh, okay. So we'll, uh, we, we won't wait for her then, just in case she only had that one hour free. I, I should have thought to ask before we had to the judging. So I don't see Michael Koretsky, unless are you there? It may be that not everyone is because we have more people. Okay, Michael, you are there. I just needed to switch to gallery view. I'm sorry, I was only seeing the first few people. There are more people. Yes, so we have the five executive committee members I was expecting. Sue may have only had time for the call this morning. So in that case, I would like um, the, uh, I will call the meeting to order and I would like the secretary treasurer to call, make the roll call. Tarquinio? Present. Uh, Gallagher Newberry? Here. Paul here. Coben Katzif. Bartlett. Here. Sorry. Yes, Lauren. And uh, yes. Michael Koretsky. Here. All here, but Sue. Okay. Thank you, uh, Secretary Treasurer. And welcome. We have some new faces that we haven't seen before, I think, at Public Library. So welcome to everyone to the National Executive Committee meeting. Um, uh, the, as some of you know, the executive committee met earlier to begin discussing awards. Our main purpose in the public portion, though, will be to hear from members regarding the executive director search. Uh, however, we will also begin by briefly discussing an idea to do a membership drive uh, for new members this summer. And then at the end of the public meeting, uh, the executive committee will need to move back into um, executive session to um, further discuss the awards uh, to be presented in San Antonio. So moving on to the first item on our agenda, Patty, uh, would you like to speak about the idea for a membership drive? Yeah, thanks, Alex, and hi, and welcome to everyone who's online. I uh, really appreciate you taking time from a Saturday to join us uh, and put some faces to some names that we've been seeing. So uh, this is a, a, an, an agenda item that was added just this week, as those of you who have been watching know. And it's a, it's a great idea, but it's, uh, it's still taking shape. Um, it's been uh, three years, as far as we can tell, since we've offered any kind of discount on membership to try to get a bump and some attention, or two and a half years. And so uh, Alex and I had a conversation earlier uh, this week about the possibility of doing a discount for membership and, um, uh, and brought Colin DeVries, the chairman of our membership committee, into the conversation, but just in recent hours. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it over to Colin to outline what we're thinking of uh, with, the, with the caution that this is a, uh, a beginning conversation and we definitely um, uh, are still tweaking it. So I'll turn it over to Colin if, uh, if you don't mind. Sure. Thanks, Patty. Um, <clears throat> many of you uh, know me already, but um, if you don't, I'm Colin DeVries. I'm a member of the Deadline Club in New York. But I'm currently in uh, a busy cafe in downtown Fredericksburg, Virginia. So sorry about that if there's some background noise. <laughs> um, but yeah, Patty and I discussed a membership drive, um, which is a great idea. And our committee is able to help uh, implement that and promote it. Um, the, the, the thinking so far has been um, around a August 1st launch of this promotion. Um, and we were thinking of limiting the time to two weeks. Uh, so if new members join during that two week period, they can join at a discounted rate, uh, which we have done a few years ago. Um, I think it was 2016. And if there's someone from, if Linda's on the call, she might be able to help confirm that. Um, but this would be part of the lead up to EIJ. Um, and we, I think it would be great. It was successful before and however we can support that, would, uh, we're, we're standing by ready to help. Uh, you raised an interesting question, Colin, because there are a number of callers and we can't see their name. We can see the Zoom names, but I know Linda was going to try and call in. Linda Hall, if, if you're there, can you holler and maybe answer that? Okay. Hi, Colin had a question. Colin was asking about a membership initiative. He, mm -hmm. I, 
think he said in 2016, but I don't recall that. Colin, do you have any details on it? I think there was something after the election. Didn't we do something on uh, by the people? Yes, we did do something after the election. Um, I don't, I think it was a small discount um, and it was only for maybe the course of the weekend. So it was a smaller initiative, but we did do something then. Okay. I'm with you now. Yeah, I, I still remember we, we did get a good bump out of that, but um, we didn't get Trump. the Trump bump. That's it. <laughs> yeah, so I think, I think that uh, if that was successful for a weekend, uh, I think a two week period or perhaps longer uh, would be great. I agree. Are you going to open it up to all classes, all membership types, or are you going to restrict it? Do you have any ideas about that yet? I haven't. Um, I don't. I don't think we should restrict it. Um, but I'm open to your feedback on that. No, I'm. I'm happy to get everybody to the party that we can. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, do we have further discussion? I mean, this is a, an executive committee meeting, so we can make a motion on this. But do we? Or do we, does someone want to make a motion? I mean, Colin, did you have further to add? I guess the I guess the thing to really hammer out in our proposal is how much of a discount we want to offer. Is it fifty percent or less or more? That that would be so, my. So, so it. I don't know. This makes sense to me that we would. I mean, fifty percent is fine. I don't care how you all do it, but how about if we let pros join for fifty? Mm -hmm. And students join for 20 or 25. You mean $50, not 50%? Yes, <laughs> okay. yes. $50. I, mean, we uh, I, I would recommend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. We've got quite a few people on the call who, who want to chime in on various things. So I think it would be good for the membership committee to quickly take this up mm -hmm. amongst themselves and come up with. Um, the metrics, what does this look like? Uh, what are the dollar price points? How long, how to start? And mm -hmm. importantly, uh, how to communicate it online on spj.org, how to, what kind of language uh, should be included on the EIJ site, mm -hmm. i.e. if you join today at this discounted rate, then you get to join uh, EIJ as a member, all those kinds of details. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know that we're asking for a short turnaround, Colin, for your committee to put something together, but um, I, would, I would recommend that the committee take up all the logistics uh, and certainly be in touch with, with Alex or myself mm -hmm. if, um, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as you have questions or, uh, you know, put something in front of us that we can all agree on. Unless anybody agrees that we need to spend this, this larger group to uh, no, I, the I think that's conversation. an point. And I just saw Mike Riley uh, in the chat. Uh, I don't always have time to follow the chat when we're leading this, but he did say a one pager. Um, I think uh, given the time, it does make sense to have the executive committee approve the concept of the discount in this meeting because we won't have a full board meeting in the next two weeks and it is summer, it's vacation, that'll be hard to do. So Colin, are you okay if the executive committee just <coughs> approve a discount in early August and um, you and the membership committee come up with a plan and share that with, with us? I think that sounds great, yeah. Um, over the next week, I'll communicate with the committee and we can get started on drafting something. Okay. And if you, if you only want, I guess if you want a one pager, we'll work on that first. Okay. Uh, Patty, as, as you raise this, do you want to make the motion for the executive committee? Sure. I'd like to move that uh, Colin DeVries and the membership committee put together a one page proposal for a discounted membership uh, uh, initiative that will run uh, approximately August 1 to August 15. Mm -hmm. I second. Okay, that was Lauren. Okay, great. Um, we have a motion. Any call for further discussion? Are we ready to proceed to a vote? I have a question. Uh, Matt. Does that discount only apply to new members or uh, ah. existing members get some sort of subsidy? That is probably a question for the membership committee to hash out. I think the original idea was new members 
and it um, and that may include last members for a while but I mean that is always a question when you do a new membership drive are you leaving uh, somehow leaving out longtime members Colin do you have any thoughts on that or do you want to bring it to your committee um, the initial thought was new members mm -hmm. but if we want to extend that to members who want to renew during that period um, we would have to think about that more um, perhaps perhaps we could if people would want to renew for more than one year, I know we do a, we do a three year renewal. Um, maybe we could put a discount on that. We'll we'll think about it and and maybe tweak some language around that. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Um. Yeah, and um, I know some people are already chatting about that, so maybe we can look at the chat at the end of this and include that in in the membership committee discussions. Okay, so if there are no other questions, uh, the executive committee members only, I know there are some other board members, but this is an executive committee meeting, so would the executive, uh, I'd like the executive committees to proceed to a vote. Oh, Matt, did you have a question? Yeah, rather than kind of gum up the works here, there's a lot of talk in the chat. Colin, I'm gonna send it to you so you know what people are saying. Okay. You can address that. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing, we should share that I'm seeing it come through, but if someone could capture that and send it to me as a whole, that'd be great. That would be a great idea. That's a great way to get immediate member feedback. Um, and also, those members on this call, if you want to give feedback, Colin DeVries is listed as our membership chair on our website, so you can also contact him after this call. So again, not the greater board members, but executive committee members only will now proceed to a vote. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, any nays? Any abstentions? Okay, that passes unanimously. Great. Okay, so moving along to the next agenda item, which is the report from our executive director search committee. Higi. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. Okay. So um, I want to give you a wrap up of the timeline that uh, has been in place as well as that moving forward. Uh, the search started as soon as we were able to sign the contract with Talbot Talent. Uh, the committee met via Zoom on June 27th, and we identified and have followed a very strict schedule. So we started with staff interviews uh, within days. So July 1st is when they started, and they ran through this week. Also, on July 5th, Talbot sent a, the draft survey questions to the search committee, and members emailed feedback by July 8th. Talbot then incorporated all of those as well as information that was developed by the Executive Director Review Committee uh, that was in place this past year as well. Matt and I were both on that committee uh, and it identified a menu of goals and priorities to evaluate executive directors. That also was sent to Talbot and uh, they incorporated that as well. And just yesterday, Talbot recirculated the revised survey questions we uh, made some further revisions and I just signed off on it. So those will be going out this week. Board members should expect them between July 15th and 19th. That'll be your date to receive an answer. And then the staff surveys will go out July 22nd through 26th. Now, anyone else who wants to contribute absolutely is welcome. In fact, I've received quite a few emails and comments, which I have forwarded to Talbot. And I can assure you, because I do speak with um, the people at Talbot, that they are definitely looking at every single thing that comes in. So any member, or anyone who wants to contribute, I welcome your emails and I will make sure that Talbot receives them. Um, Talbot's going to, going to compile all of this feedback and then present a draft candidate profile to the committee by July 31st, actually on July 31st. So then we will know exactly the kind of candidate that everyone all together based on surveys, and interviews and all the comments, uh, what is it exactly that we are looking for? We will then have three days until August 2nd uh, for the committee to complete the position profile which is going to, of course, be based on all those core competencies um, identified through the surveys, staff interviews, all these other measures and feedback that I've been discussing. And the official, official recruiting begins August 6th. But of course, we already have put out the word 
that we are looking. So if you know anyone who might be a good candidate, please have that person submit a cover letter and resume to spj at talbottalent.com. That's spj at talbottalent.com. That is the first step for any candidate. Uh, I'm, we're not forwarding uh, our resumes and cover letters. Everyone is basically on the same level playing field by sending their information directly to that email address. Talbot is going to actively recruit and vet, do the initial interviews, and then when, when they develop a serious candidate, the search committee will interview and deliberate. If we can bring any candidates before convention, obviously we will. But uh, if not, we hope to definitely present um, some recommendations to the SBJ board no later than October 18th. That is our goal. Any vote to hire will lead to the offer and then of course negotiations will follow and a signed contract. The goal is that a new executive director would start work about a month after accepting the position. So um, the Talbot definitely is planning to communicate with us by uh, at convention doing an assessment presentation to both boards, updating the latest information that's available at that time. Um, one more item before I open this up to discussion is regarding a call for the exact costs of Talbot talent. So our contract with Talbot expressly forbids that disclosure. It is proprietary information for a private company. All right, that's what I got. Questions? I, get, I just wanted to add one thing. I did invite Talbot to present, and just so everyone's clear, that's the organizational assessment that they're doing at headquarters. That's to find out information, A, to help us um, find the, the best executive director for us and also to give a roadmap to the new executive director. That will be a public presentation in our in our last meeting of this board meeting. Um, and it's specifically on that organizational assessment. I'm sure they will answer any questions um, uh, that people have, but, but they've agreed to do a public presentation there. Um, so with that, I did want to say we're moving into the public comment period. Um, given the number of guests, please bear in mind this platform is an optimal for such a large meeting and also it looks like almost half of the people are on the phone so it's going to be difficult for me to see if you raise your hands um if i don't call on you immediately i want to start by calling on the people who i see raise their hands and among those people i'm going to favor members of the public if they raise their hand the kind of board members just because the board members have an opportunity to, to speak to each other and we are here today to listen to the, the members um and there are a number of new people, many of you I know, but, but some of you are unknown to me or some of us. So please start uh, by giving your name and just a little bit about yourself. For example, whether you're an SPJ member, or a chapter president, member of a committee, anything like that. Um, oh, and finally, this is important um, because there are over 40 people um, and I wanna make sure that everyone has a chance to speak. We will be on the clock. Um, if you run out of time, you may get to speak, but I want, I want to let it move around. I also want to make sure everyone has the same time. And we tried this at other meetings, so I'm going to set it for two minutes. Um, and then people have to finish up if, if they're not done at two minutes. Um, so with that, and, and once we get the people on the video screen, raise their hands, someone on the phone maybe can give their name in between people speaking. I'm just trying to think how to include everyone on the phone because there are quite a lot of you. Um, so with that, can I see a show of hands? I see Hazel. Oh, and you need to unmute. You're, you're muted. Actually, I might be able to unmute. Uh, okay, now you can hear me. Um, I'm Hazel Becker. I am a member of DC Pro. I first joined SPJ in the early 1970s, but mm. I'm not going to tell you exactly what year because I think there's some question about that that we all <laughs> might not even have the answer to. Um, I have been chair of the SPJ freelance community, which is larger than almost all chapters in SPJ, by the way. Um, and I know that there are a couple of other freelancers on the call, but I just 
wanted to um, say that I don't represent them. These are my own thoughts. Um, I think there are two most important things for, to be looking for in the executive director. The first is somebody who really knows journalism and not just somebody who is an experienced um, association director. And the other thing is it needs to be somebody, unfortunately, who's strong enough to carry the day and keep things going when a board goes rogue. And it will happen again in the future. This is not the first time that I've seen it happen. So that's my comment. I'm done, Alex. Thank you, Hazel. Forrest. I'm not going to repeat everything I've said in my long string of emails. Uh, I will just say that I object strenuously uh, to the confidentiality of the contract. I reject, I, re I reject the notion that this committee and this board is not being fully open with members. I have no objections to Talbot. In fact, in researching them, they seem a very qualified firm. I have a connection with them because I was part of a uh, part of a focus group, uh, actually part of an initial research group 20 something years ago to, to develop the Gallup uh, uh, leadership profile, the, uh, the Gallup Strengths Finder uh, 1.0, and now it's in, I think 2.0 or 3.0. It's a great program, but we owe the members to be fully transparent. You are managing their resources. As a matter of record, I first joined SPJ in 1984. Uh, I spent m most of my life in journalism. I did spend a brief, uh, long ten-year period doing corporate communications for the Boeing company. I'm now running a little tiny newspaper, trying to make an impact in rural America. Mm -hmm. But I believe that very strongly that the approach that's taken uh, and this is wrong. Uh, I will continue to believe that, and with that, I'll shut up. Okay, Forrest. Um, yeah, uh, do I see? Matt, did you have your hand up? I yeah. Just to, I just want to point out that Jonathan uh, Make is, uh, point, is, is asking in the comments to speak, okay. representing a number of people and asking for more than two minutes. Um, I do have to keep everyone till two minutes. If we have time though, I can come back around to him if he can't complete in two minutes. The other thing is uh, I just realized um, I, I, I can't monitor chat and the, and the phone and the video. So I don't know if someone, Matt or Jennifer, if you want to. Okay, yeah, um, because it's just impossible to, to do it all when you're, when you're scheduled. So, okay, Jonathan, you're up. Uh, you might be muted. Jonathan, I, I can't hear anything. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, I am representing um, a number of groups and also two groups specifically. I will begin to read, and if you need to cut me off, you can come back to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to note that uh, a limit on um, how long the statements could be was not announced in advance, and I'll begin. Um, now, although I do not represent the entire group of numerous chapters and numerous chapter leaders and boards of directors, um, uh, I, I would say, uh, for the most part, uh, the individuals um, who, have get, who have gathered together in the formal group are, are um, uh, supportive of this, uh, with the exception of uh, the last statement, which I'll explain if I am able to get to it. Um, I request um, someone committed to journalism who puts the practice of journalism above their own self-interest. While fundraising ability is great, that should be entirely uh, secondary. Journalism leadership should be first. Uh, we request someone who has a track record as a manager, or I request that, and beyond that, shows leadership. We define that in part as a servant leader and a consensus builder and a seeker of consensus. Uh, we also, or I also, request someone who is committed to transparency, even when the news is bad, and especially when the news is bad. I'm also hoping um, that whoever does this will be someone who wants to do it for the long term, and the long term would be defined as at least five years. Um, further, uh, I'm hoping that uh, someone, and, and a number of us are hoping that whoever this person is can help expand the membership and has some creative ideas on how to do so. Uh, in the final um, thing I've sketched out, I'm more just speaking for myself here, given that there are some differences of opinion among our members on this, is someone who does not abuse alcohol or drugs, has never even been accused of sexual harassment, there's universal agreement on that, um, or doesn't 
or doesn't place inappropriate demands on staff or volunteers. I do have a couple other items um, to read on behalf of our group, things that we have expressed previously about the process where it has been the entire group that I represent. And then finally, I, uh, I also, um, on behalf of the Los Angeles chapter, which is not able to participate on the phone, I would like to provide some information that their board um, approved. And so uh, if I can quickly find it, I have a statement from them. I will stop there. Okay, and yeah. I, I did let that run longer than two minutes just because you did have a statement prepared from a group, but we can also come back to you when some other people have spoken since that seems like a natural breaking point. Can you do that? Alex, sure. I just want to say I, I can participate if needed. Joel Bellman, LA. Okay. And are you part of the group? Do you want to continue on that? I, I don't have anything to say at this point. Oh. I just wanted to let you know I, I am, or let Jonathan know, I am able to participate. I'm Oh, great, Joel. Would you, you like to speak next and continue since, yeah. No, I, I don't have anything to okay. say. I just want to <laughs> Got it. I'm, I'm here and okay. able to participate. I have nothing to say at this time. And now okay. I mute myself and just listen. Jonathan, I just noticed that Mike Riley had a question for you in chat about the group specifically. Do you want to type that into chat while we go to the next person? Can I answer it? Can you hear me? All? Okay. okay. How about yeah. I answer his question? Uh, it's also hard for me to keep up with the okay. chat. Yeah. Um, let me give you all my email address because then I can send you our materials. So I may not name all the groups offhand right now. My email address is press, P-R-E-S-S, -S, at warren-news.com. And I'll send you, we have this all online. Obviously, we are a transparent and public group. We have set up a um, email. It's not Lister, but an email chain of anyone. We define as anyone who is not on the current board. So if, if members of the current board leave the board, um, then they'd be eligible for it. Uh, who is a member of SPJ, and they can be honest. Um, on many of the requests that we had made to SPJ about transparency in the executive director search process, it has been uh, uh, SPJ DC, SPJ LA, SPJ San Diego, SPJ Chicago, SPJ Florida. Um, I probably miss uh, SPJ, I believe Indianapolis or Indiana. Um, and then we've represented different uh, leaders of um, chapters and other board members um, of chapters from Minnesota, Baltimore, um, uh, uh, New England, New England. We represent one uh, regional director from Region Eight, um, so it's a fairly large group. And in order to form this informal group, uh, I reached out to um, every um, professional SPJ uh, chapter that I could find. And I'll stop there. Okay. Um now, keeping in mind that I have um, video over, I have to click between pages. Before we go to the phone, I'm just going to be a little more complicated. Does anyone on video, hold your hand and keep it up because I have to click between two screens to see all the video. Uh, if you want to speak, hold your hand and keep it up for a second. Um, okay, I'm not seeing anyone on video who wants to speak immediately. So we have callers on the phone. So... Um, I think the best thing to do there is there's very few with names. Um, I can call out the people with names. Randy, are are you on the phone? If if you'd like to speak, you can unmute. Okay, Mike Riley is on the phone. Um, okay, so the best in this case may just be since many of them are the majority. I'm only seeing numbers. Um, Oh, I'm just seeing your name. Maybe you just don't have your video on, Mike. Um, so the best thing then is if people on the phone want to speak, if you just unmute and introduce yourself by name. And uh, if we have two people on mute at the same time, I'll just call on the first name I hear. So do people want to unmute and give their name? I'm not seeing anyone. Um, Okay, I'm not seeing anyone, so maybe some people just called in to listen. Um, again, I, there's a few more people who popped up on the video screen. I think you may have undone your video. Raise your hand if you want to speak. Okay. Um, okay, I'm not seeing anyone, so if, if, any, if I'm missing anyone, just holler. I don't see a way to raise my hand. Who's this? Just introduce yourself by name, because it's... Gary Crowley, former SPJ DC Pro Chapter President. 
Okay. And are you on the phone? Um, no, I'm on video. Okay, there's two screens of video. But I just, I, I only am. Oh, wait, no, I see you. I'm sorry, I was on the other screen. Okay, Mary, go ahead. I just want to say that I am not a part of Jonathan's groups, although I might well have been. I prefer not to be joining any of these groups and protesting SPJ, but I am extremely, extremely concerned about the lack of transparency as a former officer and formerly very active member of the chapters. I would like to see that change. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else? Um, I'd like to speak. Okay, uh, can you introduce yourself by name? Yes, um, my name is Catherine Jones. I'm the regional coordinator of Region 8 that covers Texas and Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am part of the, of the group, as Jonathan indicated earlier, uh, because many chapters in our region have contacted me, uh, including San Antonio uh, and, and others. Um, and I'm going to just read something on their behalf. Um, Many of us have, uh, are rather shocked that there has not been more transparency in some of the board decisions. And we feel this goes against SPJ's very own code of behavior. We expect our elected officials to be transparent and open in conducting the public's business and we hold them accountable. But if our own leaders don't uh, think that applies to them and the organization's members, um, you know, that really smacks of hypocrisy um, and sets a very bad example. And some of us are very concerned that, you know, in this uh, atmosphere we operate these days where, the, where journalism is, is under criticism from so many um, directions that this could be used just as another weapon against journalists to undermine uh, our credibility. And so we just urge uh, the board to act with um, all the transparency it can. We, we expect that from others as journalists, and we have to set a good example for ourselves. So thank you very much. Okay. Um, going back and forth between the two screens, is anyone raising their hand to speak? Oh, whoops, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the timer. Hey, Alex, um, this is Lauren. Lauren. But if Hi, Lauren. I'd like to, to speak for a moment, if I may. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to let the people on the call know that I am serving on the task force that Matt is chairing about reviewing board policies, and I'm drafting a transparency policy. There's a number of you that are familiar with that based on emails. And so, again, just encourage anybody who is, has anything that they want uh, the task force to talk about, feel free to send me an email, spjlauren at gmail.com, and we will take it up with the task force. Okay, does anyone else have their hand up? I'm flipping back and forth between screens. I anyone do. has their hand up? Is there someone? Oh, Matt. Yeah, thank you. Um, and again, I defer to public comment, so if anyone from the public still wants to talk, uh, uh, I, I will uh, bite my tongue. But just really quickly, um, thank you, Lauren, for bringing up the task force. Uh, you, you, everyone here on uh, the call who does not know will be happy to hear that Catherine is on that task force. So this is not just uh, board members, people are criticizing, doing things um, in, you know, for ourselves. We really are trying to reach out to everyone. I'll echo what Lauren said, as I have done before, my cell phone number is widely out there. My email, call me if you have anything about transparency about any policy you want to discuss. And two, a question for the last two speakers, particularly Mary and Catherine. Uh, I heard criticism generally about uh, lack of transparency for board discussions, but I wonder if either in the chat function or um, verbally, you can explain specifically which board uh, decisions you are frustrated with and feel like we have not been transparent about. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, okay, this is Catherine again. Um, okay. What I'm hearing I've again, actually I'm, seen, I'm, Catherine, I've actually seen several other people who did want to speak, though. Deanne, um, Deanne has contacted us through chat. Are you trying to speak? 
Uh, you need to hit, I think, star to unmute because it looks like I saw someone unmute and then mute. Deanne, are you trying to speak? Okay, I just want to make sure everyone who wants to speak has had at least one chance to speak. Um, hello? Okay. Rebecca, there was also Rebecca just texted that she wanted to speak. Rebecca? No? I think it automatically, Jennifer, I'd have to ask you, but I think it automatically, Jennifer set up the call. Jennifer, does it automatically have callers on mute? Yes, and they should be able to hit star to unmute. Um, okay. That might be a problem. If somebody can tell me what the first four digits of their number is, I can unmute them. Oh, that would be a good. Could someone text? Um, let me do that. I've got someone who contacted me about speaking. Um, we can then unmute them if they're having trouble with that. Okay. So 214 is one of them that I just got. Jennifer, can you unmute them? Two, one, four. Oh. Uh, I've actually also... Can you hear me? Who's this? Rebecca Aguilar. Oh, okay, yeah, great. Um, you're on. Sorry, you guys, for the technical difficulties. Um, I'm Rebecca Aguilar. I'm the current SPJ diversity chair. Uh, I was appointed by Alex. Just want to give you some good news. We revamped the whole program. Uh, we selected six fellows that you will meet at the conference. We had the largest pool ever of applicants, 21. I hope that you guys get to know them. Uh, we're posting their photos and, and a little tidbits of information about them uh, up until the conference so you guys can know their faces um, and that kind of thing. So I'm really happy that our committee uh, did the, the goals that we had, and uh, I appreciate the, that the president, you know, didn't micromanage me. Um, I did want to make another uh, statement. Uh, as you may or may not know, I am the former NHJ vice president for four years and at large for two years. Also sat on the board for the Fort Worth chapter. Um, I've also been the co-chair of the diversity committee, the co-chair of the digital committee in the past. Um, I could go on and on, but um, because we only have two minutes, let me just say that, you know, at a time that when we're competing for members with other journalism organizations, I think it's crucial that we show respect for a good, you know, for, for those on the board, for those who are members, we should show good leadership skills and no drama. You know, I was alerted to Michael Koretsky's video um, of our president by a member of SPJ. I had no idea. Uh, by the way, this member is also a member of NHJ. You know, he said, what's going on? What's this drama? Another SPJ female member told me on the phone, hey, why is this Koretsky guy allowed to be such a sexist, calling the, the president, Alex, crazy and insane? You know what? This put me in a very delicate position because I really wasn't caught up on the drama, to be honest with you guys. I got too many of these things going on in my life. So after I viewed the short video, I, I kept thinking, you know, what happened? to following the SPJ code of ethics, do no harm. And I also found it offensive that Alex was called many derogatory names that I always, or are always used on a woman. Now again, remember, I was on the SP NHJ board for six years. Believe me, I did not agree with many of the things the presidents did, but I never called them derogatory names, let alone in public that future possible members could see. I was shocked that no woman, despite how you feel about our current president, did not tell Koretsky, hey, take down this video, or at least stop calling her name. Let's be professional. Let's be strong. Let's be good leaders. But calling her names like insane? Look, like I said, I sat on the board for six years at NHJ. I had major differences with the president, but never would I call them names. I take, you know, I, 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 I looked at the, the, the video, the two hours or three hours meeting condensed into nine minutes. And I thought, you know, I remember a long time ago, my, my background is television news, 28 years, lots of awards. And I was always told, never manipulate a video 
to make someone look bad. That is a no-no in television news. And I saw that in this video. Despite of how you guys feel about this president, believe me, me and Alex have, you know, also had our differences. Rebecca, Rebecca. But I'm not going to. Oh no, no, it's just it's time. Uh, thank you for your comments, um, but it, it is it is time on that. Although everyone, we can come around a second time if people need more time. Once. Um, yeah, I do want to finish. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, there was someone else on a seven zero three number who wanted to speak. Can we, Jennifer, have, did you see that? I think that number has been unmuted, D? Yes, hi, thank you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Excellent, thank you, I'm Deanne Divis. I'm the Vice President of the DC Pro Chapter. I appreciate the opportunity to say something. Um, with regard to the executive search, I would like to suggest that one of the elements that they look for is entrepreneurial experience not necessarily as a person in a startup company, but someone who has taken a project from zero to successful. It's a different set of skills. And based on what I understand uh, the challenges are going to be, I think that that would be an important set of skills, um, different from working in an established structure, but to actually create new structures and make them work. I'd also like to suggest uh, this is a scooch off topic, but I'll be very brief in the membership drive that you folks were discussing early on. If it could be included in the, the mechanisms for signing up, the chapter sign in so that they can join the chapter as they join the national organization. Thank you for the opportunity. That's my comment. Uh, thank you, Deanne. I, I would just like to... Um point out that Deanne actually mentioned um, specific qualities. We're looking in for an executive director, which was what I was hoping to do at our most recent meeting. And I hope that conversation will continue um, throughout the summer or essentially until we have a hire. Um, regarding transparency, I know other people may want to speak about it. Uh, at this point, I would ask that people who want to speak about the transparency be specific on exactly what they are looking for. Um, because I would have to say I've written a blog post on Freedom of the Press blog um, almost every week. <laughs> I mean, certainly at least three or four, even some weeks when there was not much news because it is frankly a slow moving process. So um, the, the most recent one, of course, there was news because that was the kickoff. Um, and I have, to the best of my knowledge, I've shared absolutely everything I'm legally allowed to do. The consultants will not let me say their exact fee structure. But to be perfectly honest with you, I hinted at it pretty closely, as close as I could when I said that it was being covered by the, the fees of not having the executive director. Um, I should also point out that both the cost of the executive director salary and the executive director search is being shared evenly with the foundation and our board. I mean, that's just the way we're set up. The foundation pays half of the HQ, the, the cost for our staff. Um, so... I had, these aren't figures I did, I had our controller do an estimate of how much we would save by not paying an executive director and how much the contract was. Our controller came up with those figures. They were shared with my full board and I sent them to Irwin because I needed Irwin's approval to get this contract. So our board knows these figures and um, personally I'd love to be able to share them with you but, but the consultant, um, has said they won't waive that clause in the contract. Other than that, I haven't heard of anything that you want me to share. So if there are other things you want me to share and I'm able to share them, then I'll do so in my next Freedom of the Press blog post. Um, so that being said, if people want to follow in and, and with specifics other than the cost of the Talbot contract, that's fine. But uh, in terms of just generically supporting transparency, I think we've covered that. I would like to hear from other people who like Deanne um, want to talk about what they want to see in the next executive director. Um, so do we have a show of hands? Uh, Rhett. Yeah, hey, um, Mr. Quinney, I, I uh, actually just wanted to say that I hope you're doing all right. I know you've gone through a lot in the last month and a half. Um, and I also, if I if respectfully say, I think uh, you're a little out of sorts on the 1st of June, so I hope you're doing. But also, between that and things that have gone on since, I hope Hope you're doing all right. Oh, I'm, I'm hanging in there. 
<laughs> but th thank you, thank you. It's been it's been obviously a challenging time in the interim, but um, but I think um, more importantly, the staff is really hanging in there, getting through. Um, any other hands? Um, Hello. Who I hear a voice. I didn't see the hand. Uh, uh, maybe it's someone on the yeah, phone. Yeah, I don't. I don't have. Yeah, I don't uh, know how to do the hand, but this, excuse me, this is uh, Elliot Spaggett. I'm a board member of the San Diego SPJ. We had a okay. board discussion this week about uh, what we were looking for in an executive director. Mm -hmm. And the uh, overwhelming theme, overarching theme was someone who has a, a thorough and complete understanding of SPJ's uh, strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. and lots of ideas about how to improve on them. Uh, one one board member said, uh, and, and there was general agreement that we're looking for someone who has a uh, high high priority for for to address uh, declining membership and has the uh, chapters, the, the health of the chapters, the local chapters, high in mind, and lots of ideas on that. Um, there was a feeling we didn't need to necessarily have a journalist in that role, but someone who again really understands the organization. So that was uh, that was our, our general comment. We were also wanting someone to uh, who knows how to balance competing personalities and agendas, mm -hmm. and someone who knows how to motivate staff. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's a very thorough and complete list. Um, Excellent, and, and that's exactly the kind of feedback we want. One thing we're hoping for is over the summer we get more member feedback and the kind of executive director they'd like to see. Um, and we'll also be sending a survey more broadly about what, what people see as the future of SPJ to members this summer, but that will feed into that, that process. So do we see any other hands? And give me a second to flip back and forth. Um, anyone want to speak? Okay. So anyone on the oh, phone? This is Andrew. Can I? Can I? Andrew, see it. I recognize your voice anywhere. Yes, please speak. I know. I'm sorry you can't see my beautiful face, but <laughs> um, my computer for some reason won't let me do the video. Okay. Let's call in. Um, but first, I want to say that it's been great to see what you guys have done over the past month. Um, you know, I think bringing in the outside agency is fantastic. Um, regarding the transparency thing. Um, I think one good thing would be to maybe create a playbook for staff and future um, committee or sort of boards. So that way, when we have a high profile departure, um, you know, what we do and something that might be agreed on by a large number of people. Because I think one of the things that people forget is that we're all journalists that volunteer with the organization. I am just a humble uh, member at this point. But, uh, you know, we're not involved often with the business side of organization. So, um, you know, we've had really dependable uh, executive directors. Um, so we've never really had to experience sort of an abrupt departure. So it might be a good to have a playbook in the future where we could sort of say, hey, listen, we thought about this and we have this to turn to when we get that resignation letter about the first things we do. Mm -hmm. So that might just be a good thing to do for future boards. Um, so that way we don't have to worry about this in the future. The other thing I want to say about what we want to see in a future executive director is that um, I think it's always good to have someone with journalism experience, but I don't think that should be necessarily a priority. I think we should find someone who is honest and sincere about their support for journalism and the First Amendment. Um, but I think especially when we were going through the last search, I think the priority was to find someone who was good at operating behind the scenes and keeping things together. And I think what the executive director brings to the organization that we necessarily can't as volunteers and board members and members is the sort of business side of the equation. So, you know, if they're great at figuring out how to get people to join and run books, I think that's more valuable than someone who maybe was a reporter at one time. Um, but if we could sh find that they had had support uh, for the First Amendment and journalism um, throughout their career, I think that's important um, and that they're sincere about that. Um, so that's pretty much my comments, but um, I think you guys have done great work over the past you know, month and a half, and I think it's great that you're bringing in uh, Talbot and keep up the good work. Thank you, Andy. I just wanted to uh, comment on a couple of the comments in the Zoom chat. Um, about the task force, and I want to make sure everyone on the call knows, since obviously some of you don't follow the uh, national day in, day out, uh, 
Actually, this task force that Matt's doing has been around for a while. It was one of the first actions of my term was to appoint a task force to examine all of the board policies. So I don't want you to think this is something new. Um, of course, transparency has become more of an issue in the last month or so or more, something has been discussed more. But we're actually looking at transparency, conflict of interest, uh, various awards. So just FYI, Matt's in charge of that. I asked him to inventory the existing policies update those that we felt needed updating and um, perhaps recommend new policies if, if we feel that there are some that, that we don't have. We don't have, for example, a code of conduct. That's something people asked about. So if members want to give feedback on any policies, not just transparency, that's your ma'am. Um, that being said, do we have any hands up? Um, and it yes. takes a second to go back. Forrest. I'm, I'm on to another topic, uh, not, not transparency now, but the dire executive director search itself. Mm -hmm. So if Talbot doing this, uh, I'd like to specifically know what they're doing. Uh, my, my, my concern is that we have someone who has innate leadership skills, who understands how to uh, mm -hmm. strike the balance between a professional staff and a volunteer board, which unfortunately, in my experience over the last 35 years, and even on the national board can be that they can be rather persnickety to deal with from time to time. So it's a huge set of skills we're looking for. So how is Tal Tal Talbot mm -hmm. going to identify those skills? Will they be using the uh, Gallup Skill Finder to do screening for folks? How will they present those people to the board? And, and again, how will they identify those people who have the leadership skills needed to help our organization? Okay, well, actually, Hagid is the point person. Um, Patty and I went around and looked at various consultants um, and then the board, you know, voted on the Talbot um, contract, but Hagit is actually the point person on that committee. So Hagit, do you want to address for us questions? So Talbot is following the process I described uh, a little earlier. They are first listening to us. So they're listening to not only the board members, but taking in all of the comments that have come in both an email and, of course, everything that's been said in this meeting and listening to the staff and they're compiling all of that, uh, including what you just said. So thank you for the priorities that you set that you would like to see in the next executive director. And they will then use their own process to uh, grind it down, for lack of a better word, and present to our committee this is what it seems like is the profile that people want. And then they will use that to uh, vet, interview, et cetera, candidates that apply. I hope that answers your question. Not really, but uh, not completely. But I appreciate your. I appreciate well, what you're you said. You're welcome to follow up. You're welcome. I, I'll, to I'll do. Up. I won't take up time on the call. I'm not being cantankerous. I'll just. I'll send it through the messages. But I'm really more concerned about specifically how they're going to identify these candidates and what kind of profiling they do because that makes a big difference in them just saying them making a guess at it. But I'll. I'll I've gave my two minutes. Thank you very much. I, I understand, and I do not think they're going to do any guessing. They are a professional organization that is, has done a lot of searches. And so they have, I'm sure, their own processes, which may not be uh, shareable because it's, again, a private company and they aren't going to share information of how they do exactly what they do. But I am very confident that they are going to be able to use the processes they've developed over the years that they've been in business uh, to take into account everything that we are asking for and to find us hopefully some really good candidates. Uh, I think that uh, you have heard uh, other people on this call, Rebecca and some other people allude to some of the um, recent issues that have been public. And we are very much hoping that those uh, public spats do not discourage people from applying we are hopeful to get an amazing new executive director who will take us into the future. I think everybody on this call is in agreement that that is the ultimate goal. Um, okay, I've seen Patty's hand and I just saw a message from someone else, but I saw Patty first. 
Thank you. I wanted to invite uh, folks on this call to share their perspective about whether the next executive director should be the public face and voice of SPJ. This, mm -hmm. is, uh, this is a characteristic that I myself am conflicted on. I know I've heard from some folks who say, yes, absolutely, the, the executive director should be the person who is um, making a lot of public appearances, doing interviews, speaking out, becoming a known person, because after all, boards come and go, a president's in the job just one year and moves on and so on and so forth. Um, and yet it's a, it's a heavy lift, right, to ask for an executive director to do all of that in addition to being a very competent association management person who can do all the other things that we want, run the staff, grow the membership, um, handle the financials, et cetera, et cetera. So I would like to hear what people think about whether uh, the next executive director should have that among his or her responsibilities. And FYI, I see some people who started to talk about that in chat. Um, uh, Quite a few have, and I don't know if they want to speak or they just, most of them um, have been talking about association management. Uh, I think one person did say that it made sense to have the public face. Um, by the way, Jennifer, we have chat, oh, Hazel's hand is up, but uh, do we have the record of the chat after this? Yes, we will. Okay, okay. Hazel. Um, on the public face question, I think that the public face of SPJ should be a journalist. And a number of people here have said that they don't think that it's important for the executive director to be a journalist, and I agree with that. But if you're looking for somebody who can step out front and say, I'm representing all these journalists, I think that person needs to be connected with journalism in some, some fairly major way. That's all. Okay. Other comments specifically on that? Because I think I have a couple people who want to speak. Anyone else want to say whether they think there should be an, an advocate for journalism versus an association manager who runs the office? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands if someone on the call wants to pop in. I did get a message. Um, in, uh, uh, Okay, Yvette Devilla Richards, are you on the phone? I got a message you wanted to speak, but I think you're on the phone. Oh my. If you can unmute yourself or maybe just tell me what your number is. Um, Rebecca Aguilar, are you on the phone? I think you wanted to continue. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. This is Rebecca. Um, just to continue of, of um, the statement I made earlier, I love this organization. I'm glad that, you know, 11 years ago, someone said, hey, you want to join this? At the time, I, like I said, I was a board member with NHJ, and I thought I can't take on another organization, but I'm glad that I have taken it on, and I'm glad that I've been a member. I've met so many great people through it. But I think it is crucial right now that Koretsky take down that video. If you guys want a quality director who wants to come in and become the force that maybe has lacked in the past, that is someone that will be the person that will bring in sponsors and money, that kind of thing, then that video needs to come down because it looks like a bunch of mean girls. It is hurting the organization. I know two people who asked me, do you have to be Hispanic to join NHJ? I said, no. And they're going to the conference through NHJ. They're not going through SPJ. You lost two people. How many people, other people haven't called me? So I say, he should take that video down. Koretsky, if you're on this call, move your ego to the side. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than just the board. Also, I know what it's like to be in a board bubble. I've been in it. And right now, some of you are in that board bubble. Step out. We don't need the drama that Jaws was dealing with. They mm. had their drama, remember that? And it turned off members. So please, take down that video because you will not be able to get a great director once they see that video. If it happened to, our, uh, to Alex, it can happen to them. 
it can happen to any of you board members. Because believe me, if you would have done it to me, I would have sued his ass. And that's the truth. Thank you for your time, everybody. I'll see you at the conference. May I speak just briefly, Alex? Yes. Um, go ahead. Yes, Sorry, Bob. I, I can't find raise my hand. Um, <laughs> on, on the journalism, on the face of SPJ question, because I've been a member way too long, I know that SPJ has tried that several times in the past with marginal to disastrous results. Mm -hmm. And so the issue requires a very special person who has the skills of a Joe Steele to run an organization and the ability to be the face of this organization as a journalist. And that's a rare person. So it, we have to be careful on that issue because it seems if we're going to do that, we are limiting the pool of applicants who can do the management of this organization well. And that's what I have to say. Okay, I got a message that someone, and it's I think almost the very last number, Jennifer, I can't unmute because I think you're the host. Someone with the number 1929, and then um, it's like the next to last one on the second page is trying to speak. Okay, you're on. That, that's me. Hello? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hey, it's, Yvette. it's Yvette Davila Richards. Hi, Yvette. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, you're Yay. on. Yay. Yay. Oh, my God. Finally. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so I'll make this short. Um, Muchas gracias, señora Dios. Um, sorry, I have movers here setting up stuff for my new place. Okay. Um, I agree on the... When I agree, you guys are mentioning if the ED should be the face of the organization um, in line with, with um, the president. Um, I think they should work together, to be honest. And um, normally it's usually the president who does. I think if the president's not available, the ED can make um, the face, you know, may be the voice to, to voice our concerns or, or announcements. Um, I definitely think the shaming that's gone on, and I'm going to be very honest, I've been out of the loop because of the fire that I had in my home and just rebuilding my life again really took a whole a toll on me. Um, but it's been hurtful to see how the back and forth has transpired, and I understand freedom of speech, and I understand um, the love and the care that this, the members and the board members have for this organization. But it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, the, the, the shaming that's gone on to the staff, the shaming that's gone on to the president, and I understand that everyone has a point of view about how the president has done her job. Um, I get that because not everyone's always going to agree. Not everyone's going to see eye to eye. But the fact that things have been so public makes us look so bad to everyone else, to other organizations, to other members. I mean, they always say keep your dirty stuff within, within, and I get we want transparency, and I get we want um, the members to know what's going on, but there's a time and a place. And so I just feel that there's some decorum that has been lost. I also love this organization and have been um, a member for a while now. I'm also part of the Deadline Club as well. And I try to help in bringing as much diverse members because journalism is for all. Everyone that's in this organization because they love journalism, they want to contribute, they want to make a change, they want to make a difference. But when it gets to other boards and other organizations, how dysfunctional we look right now, that's when people are put off and they don't want to join and they don't want to be part of the candidate pool for an executive director search. So I just wanted to let that be known that um, I support the organization. I'm here to help as much as possible. Um, but the shaming has, should, should be at a level that's not over in the way that it's been. And this may ruffle some feathers. People may get upset. You know, I, we can agree to disagree respectfully. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is um, if there's, there's a problem with 
how messages are put out, is there a committee, and forgive me if I should know this, but is there a committee that then decides um, what level of communication is going to be put out? Like, do, is there a committee that then speaks to the president as to what's going to be put out the next day, if it's an emergency or something like that? Because um, I've seen how just the fact that things, something was put out either late at night or too early in the morning was, was an issue. And so I'm just wondering if there's a, a party of people that then help to draft up the message so that only one person alone is not the one doing it. Because Actually, that also poses a problem. Jennifer is here and she's, she's on staff. She's the one who leads that. She's the director of communications. But actually, that was over two minutes. So I do need to move on. But thank Sorry. you. Ben. Um, okay, thank you. Randy, I, I noticed there are one or two people in the chat box who haven't um, contributed to the conversation. I don't know if that's because they're having trouble with the unmute. Randy, were you trying to speak or did you just want to do the chat? Um, actually, I see a Randy here, so I can... Oh, uh, Jennifer, can you unmute Randy just to see if he wanted to speak? Uh, hi, this is Randy Shostak, um, president of the DC chapter, uh, pro chapter. Uh, I just wanted to thank everybody for having this meeting. I'm very appreciative of it and appreciative for all the efforts to have more transparency going forward. Uh, just in terms of the question about uh, who should be the, the speaker for the organization, I piped in on the chat saying that it could be a shared responsibility. Mm -hmm. I also want to um, emphasize uh, a point brought up earlier about the membership. Um, we'd love to, at the DC chapter, have some sort of um, in-sync uh, effort to uh, perhaps uh, have a, um, uh, benefits for people joining the local chapter as well. So I'd like to work with you folks on that. Oh, that's terrific. <laughs> Always glad to have DC on board. Um, thank you. Thank you. Andrew Seaman also typed in, but we've heard from you, Andrew, but were you, you typed into the chat. Were you trying to um, speak again? Okay. No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, got it. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that some people weren't typing in a chat because they couldn't um, unmute or something. Um, Okay, let me try do one more visual check for hands, and then uh, uh, Rhett. Yeah, thanks for letting me speak again. I just, uh, yeah, I just uh, was wondering if maybe the year, um, only it being a year, if maybe that would present a problem, and then if the board would want to represent as many members as possible, if, if uh, the face would be more collective, um, optimally. Okay. That's what we're trying to do with the survey, but I think actually forums like this um, might be even more direct. Um, let's see, in chat, there's something from Hazel. Um, okay, <clears throat> that's a response, so I can't read that. Okay, any hands? Uh, Liz, okay, so Liz, oh, sorry, I saw Liz first and then Robert Ledger. So Liz, you wanna go first? Um, yeah, so I just wanted to talk a little briefly about the controversy. I, I, from the last board meeting. I, um, Liz Enix, treasurer of the uh, NorCal chapter, for past president, um, I was really dismayed when I saw the blog post calling Alex crazy and all of the other stuff. And I just, I wanna say I understand that as journalists, we see ourselves as, um, I mean, we don't all brand ourselves as a journal terrorist, but we see ourselves as, you know, getting to the truth of the matter, you know, <clears throat> speaking truth to power and all of that sort of thing. But we are in an organization that's trying to fight back against severe attacks on the press. Mm -hmm. and, and that kind of like public name calling without any private dialogue happening, without any respectful dialogue is only creating more division and more discord. And it, it's very dismaying to me, to members of our chapter, and from what I am hearing to a lot of other people. I don't, I saw your question in the chat, Michael, that, um, you know, what do you say to journalists who cover other organizations and say such coverage isn't good for them? And it may be true that coverage isn't good for them and that we still have to cover things, but we as leaders of an organization can actually have dialogue amongst ourselves to try to resolve our issues. So I don't really understand why instead of 
having that kind of dialogue, you felt it was necessary, or somebody, anybody felt it was necessary to throw up a public blog post. I think that's the part that's really divisive and problematic. Thank you, Liz. Robert Ledger? I'm mute here. Okay. It's been interesting to look, okay, Robert Ledger, I'm, I've been around a while, president in 2002-03, foundation president, 12, 6 to 18, and Wells Key in there somewhere. Um, and it's been interesting to listen to the conversation because it's Ecclesiastes, nothing is, is new under the sun. Uh, I've been through five executive director hires, um, not all of them intimately. Um, and every time we can discuss whether we want a journalist or we want somebody who does, who specializes in association management. When we get really lucky, we get somebody who does both. Um, mm -hmm. I have both experience in both. Um, although again, we have preferred to go with the association management as the key consideration since we got a board full of journalists who can provide the journalism thing. On the face of the organization, um, when I was president, I certainly believed it should be the president, um, as I think most presidents do. Um, but we've also had some presidents who were very uncomfortable um, being the face. Um, and in times like that, it would be good to have a executive director who can step in um, as the first substitute, if you will, or someone who's equally comfortable doing that sort of thing. Um, plus, the duties of the president can be overwhelming, um, especially for the last few months. Um, and it's an awful lot to keep up with. I think having an executive director who can, can be the, the, the face as well as the president is a preferable way to go. RTDNA, their last, what, three or four, um, uh, they call their executive director to the president has been um, the face. I, most of us couldn't even name who their chairman have been most years um, because it's Dan Shelley or it's um, Barbara Cochran or whoever who, who, who does all the speaking, which does give some consistency. And my two minutes is up, so I'll shut up. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I'm trying to keep up with the chat too. Um, and I think we are nearing the time when the executive committee needs to discuss awards, but um, Robert, oh, that's not good. Mike just said you're good on deadline. That's a classic journalist right here. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, can I, can I say something? Do you guys hear yes. me? Yes. Yes. Go, go hey, ahead. Can you that again? Okay. Um, really quickly, I also believe that that video blog post needs to be taken down. It really makes us look bad. And it's funny because I tried to jump in that day and I just could not log in. And then it turns out it's that I needed to have downloaded Zoom. Um, but I did join on the regular call and I could hear. Um, it, it was bad. It was bad in terms of the shaming. I mean, it, it really needs to be taken down because it's going to make other candidates who are, we're trying to get to become executive director not want to join this organization. Um, that's, that's my take. I really feel it needs to be taken down. Uh, we can still have our discussions offline, but that is there for eternity for the world to see, and it's not a good look for SPJ at all. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Patty, are you raising your hand to speak or are you adjusting your, um, I can't tell. Patty? <laughs> I was doing both, but actually it okay. was. But I don't want to trump anybody else who has their hand up still. Uh, let me check. I got to go to the other screen. I don't see. Raise your hand if you wanted to speak or speak for a second time because I think most people are thinking for the first time we wanted to. Okay, this I don't is see Andrew. Can I, oh, Andrew can I just say something Andrew quickly? And then Patty. Yes. Hi. Um, so I know everyone's kind of obsessed about that video. My suggestion would be that the best way to move on from that is having great and productive meetings like this. And this is what I typed into chat. Um, no offense to the, you know, Michael, um, but you know, that blog's been going for a while and things have popped up over the years and we move on. Um, I don't think, you know, it's a destination for most people in journalism, no offense. Um, you know, it, it, a video is out there. In fact, the video of the whole thing is out there on SPJ's website. People have bad days. People, um, have bad months, you know, and sometimes, you know, especially when it's a difficult situation, things happen. 
my suggestion is just focus on the now and keep moving forward. You know, one blog post over the span of what 110 year history, um, I don't think is going to torpedo the entire reputation of the organization. So my suggestion is move on, onward and upward. Talk about the issues in hand, because if we keep going back, that's going to be the thing that actually detracts um, and also keeps people from applying. So I think this is a great meeting, super productive. And I think the really idea should be to move on. Um, so great job today. Bye. OK, I saw a note from Rebecca. Um, and I said I'd let non-current board members speak before board members. Um, um, uh, and then I see Hazel. Rebecca, I don't know if you can chime in. Hazel Becker. Oh, wait, no, that was a comment in chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Rebecca, did you want to chime in? You may need to unmute. Okay. You obviously are muted because I'm not hearing it. Thank you for unmuting me. Okay. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't get the name of the last person who spoke, the, the gentleman, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, the video is out there, and yes, we should move on. But let's think about this a little deeper. This is uh, Alex's reputation. She needs to make a living too. If someone pulls up that video, the New York Times, the Washington Post, any little magazine, they're going to say, this, this man labeled her crazy and insane. We have slandered her. We have defamed her. That video has to be taken down. It has to be. It's not about just moving on for the organization. Think about this individual woman. Women have a hard time in this business. This video should be taken down and that the board has not demanded, including the new president to be next year, just shocks me and makes me wonder, am I a woman, and especially a woman of color, who should remain in this organization? Because next time Koretsky could go after me. But you know what? I would bite back hard. Thank you. Okay, pa uh, oh, pa uh, Patty and then Higgy. Hi, Rebecca. Thank you for those comments. Um, I would like to talk among the uh, officers about that. Um, but today, I would like to say the following. I am your next president. I really appreciate people coming on this call and, uh, and offering us a lot of really valuable input on the executive director search, on the need to be transparent, um, and on the other matters we've taken up today. Um, uh, so I just want to say a couple of things specifically. First of all, I apologize publicly here and now, and I have in the past, for the role that I played on the June 1st meeting. Um, uh, it was bad communication between myself and Alex, uh, and it should have been avoided. We should have worked that out in advance. So I apologize for my role in that. Um, but I'll just tell you this, we have moved on. I talked to Alex the very next day and almost every day uh, thereafter, either by phone or email, because that is, um, you know, that's what you have to do as a, a leader of this organization is you you eat crow, you move on, and you get to the next issue that needs uh, dealing with, which are many. We have so many, many important issues on our plate. The most important right now, of course, is hiring the executive director. And I think we're in good hands with our friends at Talbot and with Hagit uh, leading the, uh, the search committee. Um, in terms of transparency, uh, absolutely. Uh, the things that we've uh, established uh, in, in recent weeks and months, we're going to continue. All of the board meetings will have a public commentary period. I'm sorry, Alex, may I have just 30 seconds more? That's fine. Oh, well, um... uh, I'll, I'll be very quickly. Uh, we will do a public uh, open uh, comment period for all of our meetings, whether they're in person or online. I invite everyone here who's going to be at EIJ to come to both of the board meetings, the one that Alex will chair as her last meeting, the one I will chair as my first meeting, um, and be in touch uh, any way, any time. All of our contact information is at spj.org, um, and I'll, I'll end there. Thank you. Okay. Um, I saw Erwin had his hand up. I should note, we have a public comment period in every public meeting that we hold. Um, so we don't always have as much participation because this time we're discussing the executive director. Erwin. Yeah, uh, it's just, uh, I, I have to say this meeting has gone really well and, and obviously it, 
we're moving on in a very nice fashion. I think that's most important. But I also wanted to give people an opportunity uh, to appreciate something that we're about to pull off. Tuesday evening in Casper, Wyoming, we're going to have at least 100 people taking part in the closing session with our journalist on call, Rod Hicks, um, in a free-ranging discussion about the news media and trust. Um, but it's the end of a six-month project that by all accounts has gone very, very well. Um, and it shows what SBJ can do when it's doing what it when it's focusing on what it's supposed to be focusing on, which is improving and protecting journalism. Oh, and by the way, um, uh, Wyoming Public Television will be streaming that event as well. So if you wish to watch, you can. Okay, Hagit. I'm sorry, I had seen your hand first. I, I forgot what I saw. Um, no worries at all. Um, I really do echo um, a lot of the last few comments about I'm glad we've had this conversation today and that it's been respectful. Um, and people are right. One blog post may not torpedo an organization. The problem, uh, as the consultants have told me, is it's not just been one blog post or just one video. It's been a multitude of insults over the last months and even year. And that is the problem. It's an accumulation of uh, inventory that has tarnished the reputation of the organization. And while we look for an executive director, I just want to look forward. Stop it. Just please, people, let's move forward as we have in this meeting from this day on be respectful and just stop the past uh, issues. And then we'll be able to find a great executive director and we'll be able to move forward and do everything that we need to do and let future presidents thrive. That's what I've got to say. Okay, thank you. Well, this um, meeting has answered one question for me which is um, we initially had some issues with Zoom that we had to work out. And I'd wondered if we could do sort of a member town hall on Zoom and make it work. And I think it has worked very well today. So um, with that, I don't see any of their hands and the executive committee does need to um, discuss the awards that we're going to be giving in. Um, uh, oh, and I see some compliments for Jennifer on running the Zoom, and I couldn't agree more wholeheartedly. So um, with that, we need to end the public comment period and move into executive session. Um, and I guess, actually, because we're going to have to go back to the conference call, I think we should actually end the meeting and be the conference call team. That That's more convenient. Alex, Jonathan Make still has some points to make. Okay, oh, I didn't see that, but um, he's not on my screen. Okay, Jonathan, and then this will have to be the end because we do have to um, discuss awards. Hi, yes, thank you. I'm just pulling over in my car. I'd like to finish uh, reading the items from our group of many chapters, and then uh, Correction would like to um, read what Detroit, the Detroit chapter sent me, I believe, on behalf of their entire mm -hmm. chapter. So. One moment, I'm pulling that up. Thank you for your uh, patience. Um, okay, uh, I'd like to now discuss what we are looking for in the search process. Mm -hmm. um, these things we have expressed previously, although not on a call, and I believe these are specific here. So when we talk about transparency, and I'm glad that many people have already discussed this, we would like to see information announced during business hours. We would like to see information clearly announced. Um, we have not. Uh, seen that, uh, you know, let me just focus on what we'd like to see. Um, we'd like to see things released during business hours. We'd also like to see things released with a prominence to them. So, for instance, if a blog post contains information for a conference call or Zoom or, or otherwise, we'd like to see that prominently listed in the blog post. We'd like to see it prominently listed on the website. Um, we also do have some uh, questions which we have not been able to get answered. Uh, one of our members, the head of the Phoenix chapter, uh, you know, yet another uh, member of our informal coalition, he asked an email chain consisting of the entire executive, um, sorry, the entire executive director search committee about what the, and so if you all can answer this after my time, I would really appreciate it. Um, the question is, uh, what is the uh, Talbot's involvement 
versus the executive search committee's involvement in drafting the member survey and also in being able to receive, and I appreciate, Hagib, that you, you know, uh, gave them the email address, and I appreciate also Hagib responded in great detail as, as she could, although some of these questions were, were for SPJ and not SDX. So the question there is, who is drafting the survey? What are the chances for um, the membership as a whole, like including this call, whether someone from Talbot is on this call, whether the transcript of this call will go to Talbot. So that, that is something that, uh, that's a question. And then I am done our piece and now I'm going to pull up Detroit um, again, reading this on, um, on their behalf. Uh, bear with me one moment while I uh, pull that up. Okay. Um, here is what the Detroit board um, approved. Um, they're saying that they advocate, I'm going to do a little bit of paraphrasing transparency. Um, they believe the national board needs to understand the importance of leaders, leadership, um, and how unfortunately that's being questioned now. Um, they believe there needs to be more openness regarding the search for the uh, next executive director. Uh, and they also, um, are for, uh, discourse in a democratic fashion. Um, something else, a specific thing they were asking about, and also the Chicago Headline Club, I'm not representing them, but also the Chicago Headline Club has been asking for this, has to do um, with uh, sponsorship. And, and what they are looking for broadly is that the next executive director understand that just like in the news business, we have a so-called Chinese wall between editorial and business. Of course, those entities will work together, but they have to respect each other's imperatives. They basically are looking for the... Uh, they basically are looking for the same thing uh, as well when it comes to an executive director so that someone who understands um, that, uh, for instance, uh, we don't want sponsors determining content, you know, in, in our newsletter, in our blog posts, and in our uh, programming, including at EIJ. Um, also, uh, they are, um, you know, uh, so this isn't the full board, but a number of members of their board are raising questions about uh, Michael Koretsky's, um, and I'm not sure what this is about specifically, but you know, this is about the, uh, I would say the, the concerns that have been previously expressed on this call about um, something in jest or off-color comment uh, regarding, um, uh, I'm just having a hard time boiling this down. Um, Sorry, I'm not doing a very good job there, but but you know they want him to be uh, subject to you know full transparency and journalistic norms. Um, uh, finally, they want to, uh, yeah, that's it. So ho hopefully this this represents what the um, Detroit chapter said. If you have questions, I encourage you to contact Beth Conrad, who's president of that chapter. And that concludes my part. Thank you for eventually allowing me to be heard out. And I will uh, wait to hear the answer to the question from Tim of Phoenix. Thanks. Uh, Jonathan, I can quickly uh, interject two things and then hand it over to Hagit for most of it. But to be clear, the member survey is actually being drafted by the long-term Strategic Planning Task Force, which is chaired by Victor. The consultants at Talbot have no involvement in that because it's not part of their normal working process. Um, they are drafting a survey, one for the staff and a separate survey that will go to both boards, but they're two separate things. Our, our own leaders are drafting the member survey, although we will share it with Talbot and of course the executive committee. So that's one. Also, I did, because you're in a car, you probably can't read the chat, so I did want to share what Jennifer has typed into chat, and with anyone on the phone who can't see it, as a response to you, uh, she wrote, this is Jennifer, who, for those of you who don't know, is our communications director, so she's a, a staff member. She wrote, if I may, for the record, the late release of press releases, blog posts, leads, et cetera, are not our normal operating procedures. As you all know, it's been a very unique few months. People are doing multiple jobs, being pulled in a million directions. We're bombarded with requests and questions from members and newer staff members all day long. I was doing my job and the comms intern job for three months while we hired a new intern. This has been a highly unusual time of just trying to keep things afloat. So in some, Jennifer is just saying that this has been an unusual situation the last couple of months. And their goal is, of course, to get press releases out during the day, unless, of course, there's breaking news in the evening and that we, we feel we need to respond to. So um, with and that- I, I, just quickly, I just quickly would like to say that we appreciate that. And also to clarify, in case anyone ever has the misimpression that our group does not fully support the staff, we absolutely do. Uh, we have thanked them before for their work. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. I and I think we as a group absolutely endorse the comment that Alex made that the staff has been hanging in there. Uh, we have seen all evidence of that. So any of the um, you know civil criticism, we've not engaged in any uncivil criticism that we have leveled uh, has nothing to do with the staff and has everything to do with the entire board. Uh, thanks. Thank okay. You, and Jonathan, thank you. But the staff is impacted by what happens with the boards. And I do think that uh, you had a question about whether the information on this call would be shared with Talbot. This is being recorded. So yes, everything, this entire call <laughs> will be viewed by Talbot. And, uh, you know, and that doesn't mean that it has to stop here. Anyone who comes up with any other ideas, you know, keep them coming and we'll keep forwarding them. The process continues. Okay. Uh, with that, the executive committee should um, discuss. Oh wait. Okay. I just those are just thank yous in the chat. I think. Um, so with that, I think we do need for the executive committee to discuss the awards, um, and that will be. Um, well, I think we can actually. That will be in a separate conference call. So I think we can actually end this meeting and go to that conference call unless there are any objections. Lauren, Lauren has. Her hand. So this is Lauren. I I move that we go into executive session to discuss the awards, and we do it via conference call. Yes, we do need to do it via conference call. Before um, before we go, though, I do want to, on behalf of the entire board, not just the executive committee, thank, um, thank you all for sacrificing your time on a Saturday uh, morning or afternoon, depending on your time zone. Um, I think this has been an excellent use of, of Zoom to do we call it a public comment period, but it was really a public forum. Um, and I hope we can hear more from you um, as, as the executive director search committee progresses. So thank you um, to all of you who joined us this afternoon. Um, Bye. With that, uh, does the executive committee have a vote to move into executive session um, in conference call to discuss the awards? I second. And that Matt second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, thank you to all, and um, I hope to see as many possible you as possible in uh, San Antonio. Thanks all. Thanks. Thank you.